Have you ever needed to just grab a few files from your iOS device? In this video, we will be looking at using some free tools in Linux to mount an iOS device so you can logically copy out files and also perform an iTunes backup. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button and pour some sugar on me. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at the lib iMobile device set of tools which allow the file system access to your iOS device from your Linux computer. We will be performing a disk level mount of the iOS device, and then we will be performing an iOS backup of the device. The first task that I'm going to perform is to mount the iOS device to our system. I want to do this so that I can actually look at the iOS device like it was another media device, so I can perform copies of files, searches for files, using various criteria, etc. These types of tasks you won't be easily able to perform with iTunes. So the tool that we're going to be using is called iFuse. And to use iFuse, we need a folder to mount the device. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder in my home directory. Doing make dir tilde slash iOS mount. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug in my iOS device into our system. Give it a couple of seconds so that the computer can talk to the iOS device. And then you will see this panel pop up asking you to click trust. And once it does that, it will also ask you for your PIN. So go ahead and type in your PIN. And once it's done, now your computer will see your iOS device. So one of the things I'm going to go ahead and do first is to restart the process that actually sees the iOS device. So I'm going to do sudo kill all USB mux D. And once it's killed off all the old processes, I'm going to start one again. So I'm going to do sudo USB mux D. So once again, this mux D process is going to be the one that interfaces with the iOS device. So once I have restarted the tool USB mux D that interfaces with the iOS device, I'm ready to go ahead and mount it. So I'm going to do iFuse tilde slash iOS mount. The only option that iFuse takes is the mount point, and this is the one that we just created. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And we get this error that says stack smashing detected. Stack smashing sounds kind of fun, but an error is not uh, what we're expecting here. And the reason is because the version that is on the Kane 12 distro is actually a little bit dated and it won't work on iOS 14 uh, for my limited testing. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the version of iFuse that we're using. So I'm going to do iFuse dash dash version. And it tells me that I am using 1.1.3. Like I said, this is the default um, that comes with Kane 12. And unfortunately, it does not work on iOS 14. So we're going to have to get a updated version of iFuse. And we're going to go ahead and grab it from the Git repository. So I'm going to go ahead and type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash lib iMobile device slash iFuse. And then it's pretty quick. It grabbed all of the new stuff. So then I'm going to go ahead and CD into the iFuse directory and then take a look at it by doing the ls command. We see we've grabbed the source and a whole bunch of other uh, configuration type files. So let's go ahead and generate some of the make files. I'm going to type capital PKG underscore config underscore path equals slash user slash local slash lib slash pkg config space dot slash autogen dot sh. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. This is going to go ahead and create all of the necessary files that it needs to do the compilation. And then I'm going to type make, which is going to do all the compiling. And then lastly, I'm going to do sudo make install to install the program. And after it's done installing, I'm going to type ifuse dash dash version again. And unfortunately, it's still stuck on version 1.1.3, not because that's the one that we just installed, but that's because the system hasn't updated to look at the new file yet. So the way to do that is I'm going to type hash and then ifuse, and then it's going to go ahead and point to the new version. So let's go ahead and do ifuse dash dash version. 
Now we see that we're running uh, IFUSE version 1.1.5 instead of 1.1.3. So this should work. So let's go ahead and try to mount the iOS device again with IFUSE tilde slash iOS mount. And this time the system comes back to the prompt with no feedback. And we've seen in the past that this is what Linux does when it executes the command with no errors, but we don't know if it did the right thing. But it's okay. Let's go ahead and CD into the mount point and take a look at the results. So I'm going to go CD into tilde slash iOS mount. I'm going to do an LS dash capital R to do the recursive search. So you can see there's a whole bunch of folders here from the iOS device. And once again, remember that this is not the entire phone, but just the user accessible areas. All of the system areas are not accessible to us. Uh, unless we have a jailbroken device. And iFuse actually has an option to mount the root folder, but once again, you need that jailbroken device. And so what we do see here is things like the DCIM folder, which contains all of the pictures taken by this device, and a bunch of uh, loosely scattered files that could be of interest. So let's see how much space is being used for this particular file. So we can do du space dash csh star and we can see that it's using about 485 megs in total of space and we can also take a look at the phone itself and uh, how much space there is and so we're going to do the df dash h of dot and here it comes back and tells me that it's a 60 gig file system which is about right my phone is about a 64 gig phone and then I have used about 22 gigs of space on this phone and I have 39 gigs still available. So they're great. So, you know, let's assume that we have finished with our analysis. So now in order to properly disengage the device, we need to unmount that device. So we need to get out of the mount point first. So let's go ahead and do CD to get out of there. And then we can do sudo umount tilde slash iOS mount. And now we're clear of that phone and we can go ahead and unplug it. So the second thing we're going to do in this video is to perform an iTunes backup of our iOS device. So of course you can do this on your Mac or Windows with the iTunes software. Since I'm a Linux nut, I'm going to stay on the Linux platform to do this. So first thing to do is plug in your iOS device into your system. And once again, be sure you click on the trust button when the panel pops up and then give it the pin to unlock the phone or to enable the trust and then to see the iOS device that's connected to the system we can do i device underscore id so it gives us the id of the phone and unfortunately this is probably some gibberish that is not useful to you as a human but it is useful for the software and so the thing that is useful to humans is the name of the device, which you give it. To get the name of the device, we can do the command I device name. Okay, so this, this comes back with Steve's iPhone. So my buddy Steve has volunteered to let me use his phone as the demo. And just by default, the commands that we're typing here basically queries the first iOS device that it sees in case you have more than one. And you can actually rename the device by specifying a name when using the iDevice name tool. I'm not going to mess up Steve's phone, but basically you can do that. To get the date and time from the device, you can type iDevice date. And it's Monday, March 14th at 4.09 a.m. Central European time here in Rome. To get more information from the phone, we can do iDevice info. And because it's actually a lot of information that's going to come back, I'm going to redirect it into a file called deviceinfo.txt. And then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and vi uh, deviceinfo.txt so you can see what kind of information you get. So you get the activation state of the phone, you get some kind of a baseband certification ID and chip ID, serial numbers, Bluetooth address. And here's the Wi-Fi address. We get the ICC ID from the phone. We get the, the IMEI from the phone. IMZ, the IMSI. Other serial numbers. And a whole bunch of stuff that I don't really understand. So basically a ton of info about the phone. So let's go ahead and actually start to do a iTunes backup. 
the first thing we need to do is create a folder to put the backup. So I'm going to do make dir tilde slash backup folder. And there's actually two backup tools. One is called iDevice Backup, and the second one is called iDevice Backup 2. I'm going to go ahead and type out the command iDevice Backup 2 dash D. This is basically to print out debug information in case something goes bad. And then you can give it the keyword of what you want to do. You can either say backup or unback for converting the backup file, or you can do a restore from the iTunes backup. You can type info, which shows you details about the last completed backup. You can enable or disable encryption. You can enable or disable cloud use. And so you can do a whole bunch of stuff here with this particular command. But for the most part, we're just going to do the uh, backup. And then the option for backup is to do the full backup. So dash dash full. And then lastly, where would you like to back it up? So we're going to put it to the folder we just mentioned, which is tilde slash backup folder. So that's going to take a little while to run, depending on how much stuff you have. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tilde backup folder. And we can see that within that folder, there's another folder, which is identified by the phone's ID. Now we can see a bunch of folders that are named with names that are two hex characters. This is because Apple hashes each file from the original iOS device and then changes that name of the file to the SHA-1 hash of the contents of the file. And then we also have four files, the info plist, the manifest.db, manifest.plist, and status.plist. Starting with iTunes 10.5.3, the info plist gives you the build version of the device that was backed up, the device name, the ICC ID, the IMEI, uh, the last date and time when the extraction was completed, the phone number, product type, serial number, etc. The manifest DB is a binary database that keeps track of the original file names and their new hash names, as well as the metadata for each file, such as the IDNO number when it was on the iOS device, the uh, user ID, the group ID of that file, and then time information like M time, A time, C time, the length of the file, etc. And the manifest.plist is a binary plist that contains the dates of the backup, uh, whether the backup file was encrypted, and things like that. The status.plist is a binary plist that gives you information about the backup, like the last extraction completion timestamp, whether it was a full backup, the UUID of the device, etc. And to look at the binary plist, we can convert it with the plistutil program. So we can do plistutil-i for input, status.plist. And then now if we look at the output, it's basically in ASCII, so we can actually read it. And when we're done, let's take a look at how much data we got from the backup. So we're going to do du-csh star. And we see that we got about 1.2 gigs, which is about twice as much as we saw from when we did mounting of that iOS device. So clearly the backups give us a lot more data. So most people I know won't be able to get any useful information from looking at the backup folders because they don't have any structure or real file names, right? So it's, it's really hard to put things back together. But we can convert them back to a format that's more human friendly. We can use the same tool, but this time use the unback option. So I'm going to go ahead and cd dot dot and then do i device backup to dash D again to get the debug messages. And then this time I'm going to use the keyword of unback for unbacking up. And then I'm going to point it to the backup folder, which is in slash MNT slash USB backup folder. Uh, I actually moved it because I ran out of space on my local drive, but it doesn't matter as long as you point to it. And then you hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and take all of those files that are in the weird names and map them back into a file structure that actually makes sense. But unfortunately, Apple keeps on changing things. So this tool actually will not work, right? You will get this error message at the end that says could not receive from mobile backup too. So we're kind of stuck with this program.
But hey, don't fear. The internet is full of awesome people. And Paul Daniels, aka Inflex, wrote a tool that will convert the backup folder into a human friendly format. It's not on the Kane distro by default, so we will need to grab it from the Git repository. So let's go ahead and do git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash inflex slash i device unback dot git. And once we hit enter, it's going to go ahead and grab all of the files there from git. Let's go ahead and cd into the folder that was just created. So cd i device unback. We can do an ls to see what's in here. And then we can type make m a k e and it's going to go ahead and compile all the binaries for us so now let's go ahead and execute dot slash i device unback dash v for verbose dash i for input and i'm going to type in slash mnt slash usb slash backup folder slash zero zero and i'm going to hit tab to fill in the folder name for the id of the device and then dash O to specify the output of where it's gonna go. I'm gonna put it into slash MNT slash USB backup folder slash unback. And that folder is not in existence, so the program will go ahead and create that unback folder. So it's gonna take its time to unwind everything from this backup. And when it's done, let's go ahead and CD into that folder, into MNT USB backup folder slash unback, and do an LS. And there's a ton of files in here now, including different folders like maps and mobile, um, system configuration, so forth, that actually could contain more interesting things than the mounted device. Things that are of interest is the slash var keychain folder, slash var slash mobile, slash var slash mobile device, uh, var root. So a whole bunch of very interesting folders. I can do ls and get a view, or I can get a more interesting view with the tree command. Puts it into a different view, but definitely a lot more files uh, that we see now. Just for curiosity, I'm going to do a du dash csh of star. And it comes back and tells me that it has about 1.2 gigs of files in the unback folder. So by using the libimobile device set of tools on Linux, we are able to mount an unlocked iOS device and obtain some user space files. We can go to the next level and obtain an iTunes backup, which will get us the user space files in addition to some system files. But unfortunately, if you want to get everything on an iOS device, you will need to get a full file system extraction, which as the time of this video is only available from tools like Celebrite Premium or the GrayShift GrayKey. And both of these tools are very expensive and only available to law enforcement, so good luck to you. But other solutions include Belkasoft, Magnet, Axiom, MSAB, XRY, etc. But check with each vendor as to their capabilities as these change almost daily, either because Apple changes their stuff or the vendor makes updates and gives you more abilities. For more videos on the Kane Forensics Distro, make sure you watch these videos here. Or if you want to roll the dice on what to watch next, click here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.